would our choices have differed if one of our predictor variables had been continuous, if it had had at least an inherent order? Let's have a look at that. So if we've got a predictor variable with an inherent order, um, let's, let me just move this out of the way. Let's add in another potential predictor variable of the decade in which the award was won. So we're going to be asking the driving question, has the relationship between gender and age changed over the decades? Were there some decades where the winners were older than other decades? Were there some decades where the winners were younger? And how did that look for the males and the females? Has it remained the same between the males and the females or has that changed? Our new variable decade is still going to be categorical where it's going to be groups, but it's they have an inherent order. They, they go in order. And we, so we'd call that ordinal data. And we're going to treat those slightly differently when we're creating a graph. All right, let's go ahead and create those dates, those decades. So let's see, we've got 1929, 1930, 1930, 1931, 32. Oh wait, hang on, I've got it sorted by gender, haven't I? So I'm going to need to sort it back by participant number, and then I'll have everyone who won together in the in in order. I've got all of my data selected, and I'm going to choose the data pull down menu and sort, and I want to sort by participant number. Now, did any of our averages change? because they're still relative to the data, right? Did they change? Undo it. Nope. There's the redo. Why aren't they changing? Because they're using those contingencies where they're looking at the entire column, it doesn't matter what sort order we've got the data in, they're still going to remain stable. So even though they are dynamically updating, we didn't change whether a record was female with dark hair. And so we didn't, they, they didn't, they are still accurate. So we've got all of our data in chronological order. We want to add in a variable decade. I'm just going to move these over under the insert pull down menu. We just add a couple of rows of cells, columns of cells. All right, let's see. There's one, two people in the 20s. Oh, I'm just going to put those into the 30s. So. Let's say this is 1930s, and I'm going to fill that down. And then the 1940s, and I'm going to fill that down. This looks like a pre reasonably efficient way of creating this label, creating this variable. 1950s. 1960s, 1970s, Okay, so we're going to create another contingency table. Well, this is going to be a big one. We're going to have male and female, like normal, 
but our categories across here are going to be 1930s, 1940s, 1950s. Let's see if Excel will account for us. Yes, it will. Do you see what I did? Let me undo that and do it again. I put in two examples of how I wanted Excel to count, where I wanted them to start and where and how big a jump I wanted it to make. I selected both of those and then I'm filling across. So we want the average age for men in the 30s. We're going to be inserting that average ifs again. Average if Oh, the outcome range is the age. Criteria one is gender is male. Add, click. Criteria two is if decade is 1930. We need to fill in all these cells. I think I'm just going to manually type it for the males rather than trying to use fill because fill will change the references. But then I can use fill down for all the females. You go ahead and fill them in. I went ahead and typed them all out and I'm going to then fill that down. I'm going to fill it down twice and I'm going to come back and change it. So now for the females, I need to edit each of those to, to say female. And for the overall average, 
no, I want to remove that first criteria at all, it's completely, don't I? I really just want if from H to H is 1930. Let's try another one. I'm going to actually come up here to the formula bar and copy that. And then when I paste, it's not going to be relative. But unlike fill, copying it isn't going to make it, isn't going to drag that column over. And so now I can just come in and edit the criteria. So let me show you what I'm doing. I have equals average if and then average f if h is 1950. I've got that formula copied onto my clipboard and then I'm going to click into where I want it for 1960, paste and just edit the digit. Copy in there, paste and edit the digit. This probably would have been an easier way to do all the males as well. Okay, let me just check that I've got them all. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 2000, 2010. Female. Yep. All right, are those the, the numbers that you got? I'm just going to reduce those down to two decimal places. That's Otherwise, it's a silly amount of precision. We need to look at those and see if there's a pattern. Well, visualizing is obviously going to be easier than trying to just look at all of those numbers. I'm just going to select the, no, the data for the males and the females and all of the decades. I've got the data labels. I'm coming to the insert ribbon. And under my recommended charts, the line chart is an option. We definitely want to use a line chart in this case. The reason we're using a line chart is that one of our variables is ordinal. It has an inherent order. And so you can say as we go from the 30s to the 40s to the 50s to the 60s, then it makes sense to make that a line. You can decide if you want to add the overall average into your line chart. Um, as there are an equal number of males and females, it doesn't add very much information. You need to decide on the scale of your y-axis. We don't have to include zero. In fact, I think it might be easier to see the pattern if we if we zoomed in a little bit on the scale. And choose the weight for your lines. I don't think they're really separate from the, the grid lines at the moment. I think they need to be a they they could be a little bit wider, a little bit thicker, without obscuring any of the pattern. So we want the data to take up about two thirds of the scale. So let's try zooming in a little bit on our horizontal on our vertical axis. So at the moment it's saying it's going from 0 to 60. Let's see what it's like if it goes from 20 to 60. We want the data to take up the middle two-thirds of the graph. That's about what it's doing. We can even zoom in maybe a little further. We can come under here and change the weight of these lines. So that was 4.5. We want to uh, we want to change the colors. Oh, did you see it set my cut my weights back? We're definitely going to need a legend, but again, we want it on the right hand side. We're going to want to adjust the, the font size. 
and make sure that you label your axes and give your chart a title. Let's talk about the interpretation of this chart. To interpret the main effect between the males and the females, we would look at those two lines and ask, are they right on top of each other or are they separated? And we're looking and can easily visually reason that, that they are separated. And again, we're seeing that same pattern that females win younger than males and that the amount of age difference has changed quite a lot over the decades, where some years there's very little age difference and some years there's a lot of age difference, but that there is always that age difference. So we would be feel very confident in, in interpreting a main effect that the, that gender has that main effect. To consider the main effect of, of decade, we'd look at those two lines and ask, are they pretty flat across the decades or is there a pattern? It looks like it's maybe an increasing pattern and then a a real decrease right at the turn of the millennium that, that there was a real decrease in the ages and then again a, an increasing trend again. When we have more than one predictive variable we look at those in, those main effects but we also ask is there an interaction or is this additive? And to look at visually reason about this interaction we'd ask are those lines more or less parallel? Do they mirror each other in the ups and downs or are they got quite a, a different pattern? Does the effect of gender differ depending on the decade? Each of those is an empirical question, whether there's a main effect, whether there's an interaction. When you get to your statistics class, you'll have an inferential statistic that will tell you whether there is a real main effect, whether there is a real interaction. But for now, we can look at this and we can reason about what they mean and how we would interpret those. When you're happy with your formatting, go ahead and copy it and add it to your narrative, add it to your write-up, and interpret what do you see.